Hi friends, I'm Angel Ravindra Balera. I'm studying in Puddha International School. Today, we are going to see English poem. The name of the poem is Sick, written by Shel Silverstein. But before watching this video in detail, don't forget to subscribe my channel. So let's start. Sick by Shel Silverstein. Sheldon Allen Silverstein was an American writer, poet, cartoonist, songwriter and playwright. Poem I cannot go to school today, said little Peggy and McKay. I have the mealsies and the mumps, a gash, a rash and purple bumps. My mouth is wet, my throat is dry, I am going blind in my right eye. My toenails are as big as rocks, I have counted 16 chicken pox and there is one more that's 17. And don't you think my face looks green? My leg is cut, my eyes are blue. It might be in stomach flu. I cough and sneeze and gasp and choke. I am sure that my left leg is broke. My hip hurts when I move my chin, my belly buttons caving in. My back is wrenched, my ankles strained. My appendix pain each time it rains. My nose is cold, my toes are numb. I have a silver in my thumb. My neck is stiff, my voice is weak. I hardly whisper when I speak. My tongue is filling up my mouth. I think my hair is falling out. My elbows bent, my spine ain't straight. My temperature is 108. My brain is shrunk, I cannot hear. There is a hole inside my ear. I have a hangnail and my heart is, what? What's that? What's that you say? You say today is Saturday. Goodbye. I'm going out to play. Lines 1 to 6. I cannot go to school today, said little Peggy and McKay. I have the meals and the mumps, a gash, a rash and purple bumps. My mouth is wet, my throat is dry. I'm going blind in my right eye. In the first lines of the poem, the young speaker begins by stating that she cannot go to school that day. She is determined not to go to school and she will do anything she can to convince her parents that she has a good reason not to go. The first two things she mentions are the males and the mumps. They are followed by two rhyming words, a gash, a rash. These could be associated with males and mumps, but to Peggy, it doesn't really matter. She adds that her mouth is wet and her throat is dry and she is going blind in her right eye. The narrator of the poem, the person who is telling the story of Peggy and Mackay, only speaks a few times. Lines 7 to 12. My two nails are as big as rocks. I've counted 16 chicken pox. And there's one more, 17. That's 17. And don't you think my face look green? My leg is cut, my eyes are blue. It might be in stomach flu. In the above lines, she tells that her toenails are as big as rocks and she has 17 chicken pox. Her leg is cut and her eyes are blue. The final lines utilizes the word instamatic. She has gotten the flu instantly without warning. This is why her parents are only hearing about it now. The statement comes after a number of other claims. She has enlarged toenails, chicken pox and a green face. Lines 13 to 18. I cough and sneeze and gasp and choke. I am sure that my left leg is broke. My hip hurts when I move my chin. My belly buttons caving in. My back is wrenched. My ankles sprained. My appendix pains each time it rains. Among other things, she, she claims to have a cough, a hip that hurts, a wrenched back and a sprained ankle. These last couple of phrases are interesting as it's clear she gotten them from those around her. The statement about the appendix hurting when it rains for example and the wrenched back. These are pains of an older person. Lines 19 to 24. My nose is cold, my toes are numb, I have a silver in my thumb. My neck is stiff, my voice is weak, I hardly whisper. When I speak, my tongue is filling up my mouth. I think my hair is falling out. Next, the speaker states that one of the reasons she can't go 
to school is because her nose is cold and her toes are numb. Still, this isn't enough. She moves to her thumb, neck and voice. They are all hurting or disabled in some way. She is barely able to speak and her hair is falling out. Lines 25 to 31. My elbows bent, my spine ain't straight, my temperature is 108. My brain is drunk, I cannot hear, there is a hole inside my ear. I have a hangnail and my heart is, what? What's that? What's that you say? You say today is Saturday? Goodbye, I am going out to play. After listening out a number of other melodies, from a shrunken brain to a hangnail, she is told that it is Saturday. There was no reason for her excuses after all. This immediately makes her stop talking and she runs off to play outside. Summary of the poem. The poem begins with the speaker stating that she is not going to school. There is an endless number of reasons she gives her parents, most likely to support her decision. This is a list like of reasons in the next 31 lines. The range from having males to a cuff and a shrunken brain. It's unclear if a child speaker knows how absurd she sounds, but the reader should be enjoying her funny attempts at concert. This is a fact that makes the poem all the more amusing, especially when one gets to the end and it turns out it was Saturday all along. Tone and mood of the poem. The speaker, who is a young girl named Peggy Ann McKay, is doing her best to figure out a way not to go to school. And as the poem progresses, she makes a number of flames of falling sick. The fact that there are so many different things she comes up with adds to the light-hearted nature of the text. Her tone throughout the poem varies at times. With the, with the repetition of claims of illness, it is clear how desperate she feels to find a way out of school. Other times, it's impossible not to laugh at the absurdity of her claims. It's unclear whether or not she realizes how her words sound, but the writer's mood is definitely light-hearted. The speaker's tone changes immediately in the last line when she finds out that it is Saturday. Any sense of depression she might have vanishes and she goes out to play. Word Galaxy Mumps Meaning a disease that causes a painful swelling of the neck. Meals an illness that produces red spots on the skin. Sprained, injured by a sudden and violent twist. Wrenched, here injured because of sudden movement. Numb, without any feeling. Sliver, here a small thin piece of wood or metal. Hangnail, a loose piece of skin near the bottom of your fingernails. Meals an infection viral disease causing fever and a red ache typically occurring in childhood. Gash, a long deep cut or wound. Appendix, short from appendix which is an organ attached to the large intestine. Question 1. Why was Peggy feeling sick? The answer is Peggy was feeling sick because she did not want to go to school. Second, how many chicken pox did she have? The answer is she had 17 chicken pox. Third, what had happened to her legs and eyes? The answer is, her right leg is cut and her left leg is broken. Her eyes have turned blue. Question 4. Find three examples of alliteration from the poem. The answer is, three examples of alliteration from the poem are hip hurts, belly buttons and appendix pain. Question 5. What did Peggy mean by the term instamatic flu? What do you think is the characteristic feature of instamatic flu? The answer is, Peggy meant that she had the flu suddenly or instantly when she said she had instamatic flu. Coughing, sneezing, gasping and getting choked could be characteristic feature of instamatic flu. Question 6. Read and answer the questions. My two nails are as big as rocks. I've counted 16, 16 chicken pox. A. Identify the figure of speech in this sentence. 
the answer is figure of speech is simile toenails are compared to rocks what does the speaker mean by counting chicken pox the answer is when a person has chicken pox there are pimples or blisters all over the body counting chicken pox means counting these pimples or blisters c what happened immediately after the speaker counted the number of chicken poxes she had the answer is immediately after the speaker counted the number of chicken pox one more pimple or blister appeared 7 read and answer the question you say today is saturday goodbye i'm going out to play a why was the girl so startled to hear that it is saturday the answer is the girl was so startled to hear that it is saturday because she had thought that it was no it was not a holiday and she had to go to school b why did she go out to play the answer is she went out to play because it was saturday and her school was closed c what cured the little girl of her illness the answer is the girl was pretending to be ill because she did not want to go to school once she heard that it was saturday and she did not have to go to school all her made up illnesses were cured question 8 peggy and mckay was not sick she was just making excuses to avoid going to school do you think she was wrong in making these excuses the answer is peggy and mckay was not being truthful and so she was wrong also children must go to school and study and not make excuses for not going to school however peggy is a small child and mostly all children at some point or the other try to wriggle out of going to school because the attraction of playing and having a free day is very strong question 9 what adjective can be used to describe peggy and mckay give examples from the poem the answer is an adjective can be used to describe peggy very well is imaginative if we are to look at excuses she comes up with a with to prove that she is sick we will understand that this is an appropriate adjective for her examples from the poem my toenails are big as rocks second i'm going blind in my right eye third i've counted 16 chicken pox okay friends so these were the question and answers of the english poem sick i hope you like this video if you like this video please hit the like button share with your friends and if you have any suggestions for me please write in comment section bye have a good day thanks for watching this video